back to dressing history. In this first tutorial video, I'm going to be talking about how I made this bonnet. So this is an 1860s spoon bonnet. Uh, it's a buckram form, covered in silk and decorated with these fabric flowers. To make this project, you will need some buckram, some crinoline tape, millinery wire, interlining, an outer fabric, I used silk taffeta, but satin or maybe velvet would be lovely. Some silk ribbons and flowers or something to decorate it with. You'll also need a pattern. You can either draft your own or those by timely tresses are excellent. So the first stage is to mark out your pattern on your buckram and then cut it out. So the next stage is to cut out your interlining. So use your buckram to mark out the interlining on the fabric uh, and then cut it out. So there's quite a few options for fabrics that you can use for interlining. I quite like using brushed cottons, they're nice and fluffy and give a nice soft finish to the bonnet. But you can also just use some plain weave cotton poplin or uh, some linen would work just as well. Next, measure around each of your buckram pieces and cut a piece of millinery wire to each length. Now use a blanket stitch to attach the wire to the edge of each of your buckram pieces and then take your crin and wrap it around the edge and do a running stitch to keep it in place. Repeat this for all of your buckram pieces and then use a whip stitch to attach each of them together, butting the edges together and then catching the millinery wire through the crin as you stitch. You now have a finished bonnet form. Hooray! So your next step is to cover it with the interlining. So simply lay the interlining fabric on top of the buckram and do a running stitch through the layers to hold it all together. You might need to keep readjusting and smoothing as you go.
So now that you have an interlined bonnet, you want to cut out your lining and your outer fabric. So for the lining, uh, for the bavelet, so that's the frilly bit that goes around the back, uh, and the inside of the crown, I use a cotton organdy, and then something nice and soft like a uh, polished cotton for the inside of the crown. And then of course you're cutting out all of the pieces of your outer fabric in your silk. So now use a running stitch again through all of the layers to attach your crown lining and then put your crown outer fabric on the outside and do exactly the same, a running stitch through all the layers. Make sure that you pin it nice and taut over your bonnet form. Now run a gathering stitch up the long edges of a rectangle of fabric that is about a yard long by six inches deep. And this is going to be the fabric that covers your brim. Now fold that piece of fabric in half, pull up the gathering stitches and pin it over your crown easing the gathering stitches out so that they look pretty. Then take a piece of thread and again use a running stitch to attach it through all the layers. Make sure that you're stitching on the inside of the crown though and not on the brim itself so that it won't be visible when it's finished. When you come to the end of the brim, then trim away the excess fabric, fold in the raw ends and do a whip stitch, keeping that fabric nice and smooth around the brim. Now carefully pin the fabric for the crown over the crown of the bonnet. Keep it really smooth if you can. You can cut this piece on the bias so that you can get a really lovely smooth finish. You'll have to keep fiddling, keep trimming, keep clipping, just until you get it perfect. When you're happy with it, use teeny tiny whip stitches to stitch it all together. Now take your bavelet and bavelet lining, put them right sides together and stitch through on the long side and the two ends. Then hem it on the shorter side. Now this shorter side will be the top and you will pleat it onto the bottom of your bonnet. Now use a prick stitch to attach the pleated bavelet to the bottom of the bonnet. Then finally take your bonnet lining and pin it onto the inside of your bonnet form smoothing it like you did with the outside of the crown and then whip stitch it in place. You might find a curved needle useful here.
Now you have a finished bonnet form and all that is left to do is decorate it. So there's lots of options for how you can decorate 1860s bonnets and I'd recommend that you have a look at a few fashion plates. For this one I just used some simple moiré ribbon and some fabric flowers. So here I am attaching the tie ribbons at the bottom. So if you just hem the end of the ribbon, fold it into three and then whip stitch around the edge, then it fits perfectly onto the bottom of the tabs around the front of the bonnet and you can just attach it in place. Then I made a little ribbon bow, very delicate, very pretty. This is Kit, he helped. So just keep stitching on flowers, ribbons, leaves until you're satisfied. And there it is. So I hope that you're going to have a go at making your own 1860s spoon bonnet. If you have any questions, drop us a comment down below. Uh, in the meantime, please like this video, please subscribe, and come back to see what we do in the next video. Thank you and bye.